Arguably, the very idea of nature is a symptom of our dissociation from it. For prehistoric humans, the world around them dwarfed any organisation of their environment, of heated caves and primitive tools, almost insignificant compared to today's exploitation. That wider world was a source of a kind of wonder, which was perhaps a mix of fear and a sense of plenitude, something akin to Rilke's idea that beauty is just the beginning of terror, which we are only just able to endure. For the world which sustained humans also threatened to destroy them. In that sense, arguably, humanity's relationship with nature seems to have come full circle. The earliest religions were animistic, like Japan's Shinto, finding the natural world to be animated or inhabited by spirits. For early medieval Christians, nature was God's creation, but distinct. Anselm of Canterbury, for example, attempted in the 11th century to prove the existence of God through the rather circular argument of defining God as perfect and then stating that a non-existent God would not be perfect. However, it was Thomas Aquinas, the 13th century philosopher, who stated that God could only be known from his creation. After Copernican discoveries pointed towards an infinite cosmos, God could be found again within the infinity of the universe, not outside it. And this led the way for the idealization of nature by the Romantics, looking for the transcendental in the natural world on earth. In 19th century France, with the failure of revolutions to secure democracy, the romantic idealization of nature had been transformed into a more personal and immediate experience of the natural world by painting or even living surrounded by nature.